How was your ride? <laughs> it was good. Yeah. 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 One time glory. That's what that was. That was awesome. Come again. Come again. Like, was there any times your mom screamed? Oh, when we went down the hill, I wish we had it on camera. <laughs> mud flap, our left mud flap. We've got a little bit of hardware, Allen wrench, stuff like that. And then we've got these instructions. Do you believe in love after life? All right, so we're about ready to pack up here. We're gonna leave here at Mirrors and we're gonna go seven miles to Silver Lake State Park. Along the way, we're gonna go out of our way to go find a laundry mat and we're gonna catch up. The rig is an absolute disaster. It's gonna take me all of an hour to clean all this up. But the good news is, at these state parks, checkout time is at 1 p.m. That's pretty cool. And in other news, this bar comes right around here and I parked the truck right next to it. And when Carson came out to get something in the truck, just out of habit, he pulls open the door and it scratches our windshields, and, or windshield, scratches the glass. And it's pretty, pretty big gouge. So this is the second time I've parked the rig super close to the RV and have damaged either the truck or the RV. So I think I'm gonna learn the lesson this time to keep the truck away from the RV if at all possible. So I did some research on how to get rid of a scratch and a windshield. A lot of people said like uh, toothpaste or even WD-40, a microfiber cloth. I think there's even like a metal polisher. So I'm hoping I can kind of buff that out a little bit. We'll see. So I always dump the black, and then I have the gray flush it out. A couple things I would like to say about these public dump stations. You see how this is concave down here below? It kind of makes a funnel into the drain. Well, a couple days ago, we saw somebody here, and I don't know, maybe they lost their sewer hose. You know, we've lost some sewer hoses before, and the fifth wheel it creates that little vortex. Somehow he didn't have a sewer hose, and he thought, you know what, that's okay. I'll just pull it anyway, and it'll all just kind of funnel down. Now, luckily it was this gray, but I'll tell you, if you don't treat your gray, it can smell even worse than the black. And uh, and I look over there, and I'm like, wow, you really do have to be careful when you're in this area, because you have no idea some of the things that have happened before you have arrived. I have seen, you see how it says safe water over there, and this says unsafe water, and that says safe water? I have seen someone take the drinking water hose, they dump their black, they probably dumped their gray first and then they're black. So their black, their sewer hose was all smelly. So they took the drinking hose water and put it in their sewer hose to rinse it out, which is completely unnecessary anyway. But nonetheless, if you're new, if you're brand new, you're like, oh, how am I gonna clean this thing out? Oh, there's water. And so they start doing it. I've seen people take their sewer hose like this and clean it out by going like this. Dude, I... That's just a KYD PSA that when you're in these areas, you want to be very careful. And I normally do not fill the fresh water in a station like this, even though it says safe water, because I have no idea what's happened before me. And right now we have 60%, so Trish, what do you say? We just leave it at that, and we'll just use our five gallon container, we'll just fill it manually? Sure. No big deal. We're only gonna stay two nights at Silver Lakes, and it's so humid anyway, a shower's kind of pointless. This feels so exciting our front door is right next to the laundromat i'm going to be running back and forth and there's a dog groomer hopefully they can see him and we're going to do a deep clean in the rig yes while we're doing laundry 
today's the day. Today's the day. A restart day. Hit the restart. What are these days called? Refresh. Reset. Reset. Recharge. What do you call them? I'd like to know. Do you ever have any of these? I need them. Like every couple weeks. Every like, two weeks. I have got to clean everything, all the sheets, all the clothes, the floors. It's nasty. Yeah. How close are you? Um, very close. Yeah, it's a tree that's the, the biggest problem. But you know, you could come in at an angle and then pull out the other way and then back in again. Okay. Do you know what I'm saying? Okay. How's that? That's great. Yeah, you can pull way back here. Watch out for your front. Front of the truck. Yeah, well that's, that's what I'm worried about. Yeah, you've got a whole airstream length back here. Oh, you're great over here. You have plenty of room. You're not going to get anything. Okay. So with the Furman generator that I have, it came with this very long 30 amp cord, which I've never had to use. But that's a 30 amp power, and we're pretty far away from it. So I'm gonna be plugging in this 30 amp cord. I don't know what length this is. Looks like 50 feet, maybe it's 25. And then that'll get me to the back of here, and then I'll plug in as normal with a 30 to 50 adapter. It's pretty cool. Seven miles down the road and it's a completely different state park and feel totally right it's connected to amusement ice cream that kind of thing oh yeah and dunes and like yeah <laughs> versus pentwater which is like cute little main town strip so anyway totally different feel seven miles down the road so let's do some research and find out the best place to rent side by sides and see if two two seaters is even a thing. A thing versus just one four, like just cost, you know, like budget, you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know, like spend a fortune to get two versus just one. Totally. And then, um, and we'll have a sunny day tomorrow. We so have a it's sunny just... day, so let's get into it. Let's be the dunes. Be the dunes. <laughs> We're here at Silver Lake Dune Buggy Rentals. <laughs> And we're gonna rent some stuff that's gonna go zoom zoom over the hills and I'm gonna let you guys go first and then when it's calm and you have it all out of your system then I'm gonna get in and I'm gonna drive <laughs> I can't hear a word he's saying this is the tour to show us all the important stuff the things that are kind of dangerous and whatnot and this is what it sounds like that's about as much as I got out of it
A bunch of scouts? A scout to do. Kind of a Michigan scout trip? I don't think it's Michigan. Well, I'm from CA, that's Ohio. No way. The guy that's doing it's from, uh, he's from here. Nice. And there's someone else from Bump by Indianapolis, and I don't know who was. What well, year is that? 70? 80. 70? 80? 80. Nice. 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 Okay, we're just packing up at Silver Lake State Park. Met a really nice gentleman named Dave. His rig is right over there. He's got a really cool, I wish I had footage of it. it was, it's like one of those utility boxy, not a teardrop, but like a small trailer. Anyway, he had a stroke and he was watching the channel and he said, you know, I'm not just gonna sit on my couch and rot away here. So he bought that trailer and he's out here and um, just a really great guy fun talking to him. I wish I had some footage of conversations like that because they happen all the time, but we'd rather just kind of connect with someone and learn a little bit about them and what's going on and what inspires them and what they've been doing and rather than just hold a camera and interview them. But there's just so many amazing people out here. Everywhere we go, it's uh, definitely humbling for us to see how people are making the most of their life and even course correcting a life. I mean, to deal with a stroke is not easy. Uh, you know, he can. He said. Uh, he said he he walked with a cane. He was in a he was in a kind of a scooter, but he walked. He says I walked two laps with a cane. <clears throat> he says the doctor said I would never be able to walk again. He says I like walking into his office. <laughs> it's pretty cool. So the concrete goes in. Concrete and is supposed to go in next week. Monday. That's a little. That's the slope is a little steep. I might have to flatten. You might have to flatten that out for me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all see what I can do. Yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna put the RV right here. RV will go right here. Come over here. Next week. Next week. Next week. And then right here. Look at this. See this? You might not be right though. Don't tell me if it's not right. Let's see. This is for you. This is the leech box right here. <laughs> a 50 amp. Look at that. Is that right? Is that the right, awesome. is that, is that the right kind of plug too? It's perfect. Yeah, right everything. You don't need an adapter or anything? Nope, Amazing. nothing. Let me see. Pretty exciting for me. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Who knew? Now, now I'll tell you something. The cardboard's still in there, so they weren't here today. Unbelievable. They were not here. I had to run three inch conduit all the way out to the road here through the surface of Mars, out to the road, and they're supposed to be putting the power in. And they didn't do it today. Smoke. So you had like an excavator thing? This is pick your own blueberries. First of all, I had no idea that a blueberry bush stands kind of like an olive tree, mm -hmm. a short little olive tree. It's yeah. totally cool. There's three kinds of blueberries. There's rubles, blue crop, and jerseys. I guess rubles are like older, like people don't plant them anymore. We just got the 411 from Stacy who owns yeah. this land. So anyway, a blue crop are like pretty big and then um, jerseys are nice and sweet. I'm going for the old fashioned bucket versus the blue plastic That's bucket. That's more of a pale -ish, Exactly, I'm gonna yeah. go pale. Okay. Okay. May I say something about, I'm gonna play it safe with the plastic bucket, because oh. this could have been a feeding trough, okay? <laughs> a poop bucket, <laughs> or a water bucket. Mags, what is your uh, secret to blueberry picking? You gotta pull it from up here, because no one looks up here, and there's usually big ones. Oh, Not like right people now, are just looking eye level, huh? This, yeah. It looks but the good level. stuff is... Oh, jackpot. It's up here. So you pull down the branch? Yes. And then when it comes to the actual blueberry that you pick, what uh, you know, what do you think? What do you go Make for? Make sure it's at least a little blue. Like this one's a little blue. This one's good too, but if it's purple, then no. In the old-fashioned kind right now? I have a slightly different approach. Because I'm the camera guy. 
So, and they're gonna have to round up. So you're gonna have to round up a lot. Why you're enjoying? Because my strategy is a little different. Is fruit picking gonna be something that we do more of, I'm guessing? I'm pretty happy. Kind of in my happy space right now, so quite possibly. I'm feeling like super domestic right now. Because <laughs> I know we're gonna go home and make like a pie or something good. Mm -hmm. And we're like picking it fresh and it's organic. I feel like some kind of commercial. I mean, what is this? It? <laughs> it's amazing, I have a pail, I mean, I don't even know who I am right now, but I'm really enjoying it. But you touched my berries. <gasps> I'm taking you out. Don't. Worry. <laughs> you come as a newbie. You leave as a professional. Yeah, you really do. You yeah. you guys are great. Yeah. Or Kai coming next. Mm -hmm. Let's take a little poll. What we think a bucket's gonna cost. Oh. Uh. I'd say me alone was $100 if we round up. <laughs> There's a I lot of blueberries. So how much is the little plastic container of blueberries at the grocery store? How much is one of those? Like $3.99. $3.99. $3.99? A pint. We're playing the A pint. Right? And here, let me just show you. Excuse me, Wendy. Here. This is how many blueberries? Is Wendy's four dollars bucket alone? I say it's five pounds Eight dollars for this bucket. I think eight. You think eight dollars for, for that bucket? I think mine's going to be eight. Oh my gosh. Maybe well, mine's a little bit more if hers is eight. No, actually. Then what are you paying for, for at the grocery store? Half. Oh my goodness. Five and a half pounds. <laughs> How much is that? Seven fifty. Between seven fifty and nine. There we are. <laughs> a pound. <laughs> no, not a pound. I'm at eight twenty five. Eight dollars? Eight dollars twenty five cents. I you said were on eight. money. Were on I was money. guessing, well totally done. guessing. This is Bill's grandma's recipe. Oh, I love it. Super old fashioned grandma recipe. What's in grandma's recipe? Oh gosh. For the pie crust? Yeah. Well, the pie oh, crust. Oh. Is it her pie crust or is it her blueberry pie recipe? It's actually her pie crust and you can use it for apple pie or blueberry pie or any, any fruit filling really, but they're different ingredients for. But what's this? So you put the you put sh sugar and flour on the blueberries. Sugar and flour and a little bit of cinnamon, and then on top you put some lemon juice, and then. Um, and now the butter. And the butter. Yeah. Is that it? The butter. Yeah. And then I have to roll out another. Oh top. no, there's milk there. Oh, so I'm gonna roll out the top. Yeah. And then when you put the top on, you brush it with milk, mm -hmm. and you sprinkle it with just a little more sugar. Then it makes it nice and golden. Gotcha. Yeah. That's okay. Michigan. Right there. That's Michigan. <laughs> what are you doing, Trish? Oh my gosh, Wendy just made the most awesome little mini cake for Caleb. Oh, portrait mode is insane. Gluten free blueberry pie. Would you like to see Come mine? On. There we go. Mom, would you like to see mine? The baker. Oh, that's so that's cute! Look at it, look! Okay, on another <laughs> note, what is it that you're doing today? On the menu today, we have creamy sausage pasta. Mm. We have brie, uh, bacon brie mac and cheese. Mm. <laughs> we have grilled cheese sandwiches to go with roasted tomato soup. Mm. And we have little mini pocket tur uh, chicken pot pies that we're gonna make. Wow. I think we can get through it, but it's gonna take a little while. Today's comfort day in the cookbook. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> comfort food day. Yes, comfort food day. <laughs> this is kind of interesting. What are you guys doing? Are you like sous chefing? Mm -hmm. Yes. What is it that Trish has you doing? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, pulling pulling apart the, <laughs> I'm pulling apart the chicken. I'm dicing the onion. How much? Oh, 
Good job not cutting that. My brother just cut this. We're just opening the race. We're in Grand Haven, right before you walk down the pier. And um, I don't know, is there anything better than getting a snow cone? Just sitting and chatting? Honestly, no, there isn't. <laughs> Good. I like your new concrete pad, by the way. I like it too. Now the issue here, though, is the sewer because it's all uphill and you're on septic. Yeah, but yeah. it just so happened that running the sewer all the way back to my septic, mm -hmm. if you dropped it the proper amount, it was like within two inches of the right depth, so it actually worked. Really? But, but if I had been going down, but you couldn't put it in over here because you I can't go up. But I would have had to put a lift station in. Oh, and we yeah. love having you guys come to visit, but not enough to put a lift station. <laughs> <in>. <laughs> All right, as you might notice, the rock tamers are gone. I gave them a second shot and elected to go without them. Not because I didn't like them and not because I don't think they're effective. They're just so bulky. And when we're not towing, you've got these big mud flaps which Trish doesn't like. And because they're connected to the hitch, you know, it's just kind of difficult to take it off, off the hitch, on the hitch. And, and the drawback, if there is one, is that if they touch the ground, you can have some issues. I really liked the WeatherTech mats that we put on the F450 because they kind of look OEM, they're, they're really clean. So uh, E-Trailer sent these mud flaps and I don't know if they're the same for the front and the back, so I need to look and figure that out, but they're no drill mud flaps. And I'm sure they're not gonna be as effective, but I just like things that are streamlined and simple and clean, and so these look pretty good. So Caleb and I are gonna throw them on. Take care to remove all dirt, debris, and stains from each fender area corresponding with the mud flaps being installed. I'll tell you, these guys are a little OCB, huh? Park the vehicle on level ground. It's level enough. Begin with the driver's side mud flap installation. Now they're telling. Now they. Now they. Now they're mandating which side I start on. I'll start on the side that I that I want to start on. And also, we okay. are on a huge slope right now. Okay. Look at how clean and flush that looks. So, here's what I've got. I've got a 7 16th socket. Comes with the hardware, little Allen wrench. Pretty simple little install, no drilling. I don't have the little tool that they talked about, but I found out that a pair of pliers pops these plastic rivets up pretty good. And the nice thing is, you're replacing them with the hardware, so it doesn't matter if you wreck them pulling it out, because they're not going back in. So, let's get these things out. There we go. All right, so then this stays in the uh, lock position. Right, so let me get that. And then this little thing goes back behind here. There we go, I think that's on. You hear that cracking? Yeah. It's probably just dirt and debris that we didn't clean off. Is that a joke? Probably isn't. <laughs> The front mud flaps. Here you go. Goes right in here. Now it looks pretty nice. You think so? I mean, it's kind of it kind of lines up with that. It does look OEM. But it's also very distinguishable. Like the back ones look default, which is nice. I love that clean. Look. You want to throw them on? Just as we can. We can see what it actually looks like towing and going down the road. And if we think it looks kind of derpy, we can just derpy. Take it off. We'll throw them off, huh? Because it does. They do look clean, don't they? Um. What do you think? All right, we've installed the mats. What do you think? Or the mats. <laughs> I say mats because they're weather tech, but the mud flaps. Well, they look nice. 
I knew to look down here since you did it on the 450. Yes. Yeah, so. Um, what do you think of the back? Did you only do just the backs on the 450? Yeah, because the front ones didn't fit because they were 450, had a wider front end. Oh. But yeah, this what do you think? This is super nice. It's clean. Do you like them? I like them. The question is, do you like them? Is this my truck? It is. <laughs> I like them a lot. They look great. That is the WeatherTech install, mud flap install. Link to, if you're interested in these mats, link to eat, get them on e-trailer is right here. I don't know, keepyourdaydream.com forward slash mud flap. And then that'll <laughs> that'll redirect you to the e-trailer site so you can you can pick those up. But these are my, these are the second pair we've had. Mm -hmm. And we really like them. So uh, other than that, we need to get the Kuat rack from that rig onto this truck. Okay. Because we're taking our bikes up to Mackinac Island. Okay. And a lot of people have been asking about an update on how the Kuat rack is doing. Like when people see us in real life, IRL, mm -hmm. they say, how's the bike rack? How's, oh my gosh. It's an acronym for in real life. Yeah, you've never had that <laughs> no. type? No, no. Yeah, that's. That's funny. That's lingo, babe. So, anyhow, so we want to provide a review on that because I think we are a good 5,000 miles into this trip, mm -hmm. so we should know. <laughs> What's going on, Drish? <laughs> Wait a lot. As as God is his witness, he tried. <laughs> he tried. <laughs> he, he was seven miles per hour when he swims. I mean. All right, Trish. <laughs> Wendy has brought up these baby ducks back? from babies, okay? And they come back and they bring their friends. So she was trying to feed them with Caleb. And Charlie has been placed here all night, but he couldn't contain himself. And so he <laughs> bolted down the stairs before Awkwardly. I could get Bolted, okay? And then chased them off. Now he's looking, out? he's out in the middle of the lake trying to get them. He's not as good of a swimmer as, as uh, Maddie was. was. No. And you're gonna use an ice cooler. Yeah, yes. I have all the drinks in the cooler. A bunch of ice and all the drinks in the cooler. Where'd your ducks go, Wendy? Yeah, what happened? <laughs>